the man, he's the myth, he's the legend, he's the scientist with all the answers and all the questions, it's time for another episode of Alex's Science Corner. So, what's going on in the wide, wide world of science, my friend? Frog tongue? Not yet. Oh, okay. We'll be there. Saving the oh, best boy, for last. Well, your enthusiasm is uh, <laughs> palpable. Ooh. First up, I know a big word, right? <laughs> First up is a uh, story about dinosaur DNA. Unfortunately, it's not dinosaur DNA, actually. It's dinosaur proteins. Researchers were able to pull proteins from a dinosaur that uh, they've rated as being about 100 million years old, which is a really great job of pulling various proteins from the dinosaur. Now, we can't pull dinosaur DNA out. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm wait, gonna a minute, dino- wait a minute. They did that, they did that on, um, what was that? Uh, Jurassic, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Yeah. How um, did we not get... That ready? was a movie. <laughs> yes. That wasn't real life, that was, Bobby. The mean, it, I oldest it was based DNA. on fact. It's not based on... Dinos- the oldest DNA they've ever been able to pull out is about seven hundred thousand years old. They can't. They haven't been able to get DNA past that point because DNA will degrade over time. So, what's the use of this protein? Well, it is able to get genetic information about dinosaurs and other information about what was going on with dinosaurs at that time, because there's a lot of stuff in your cells that help define your cell and who you are. The genes are part of it. DNA is part of it. But there's also RNA and proteins and other biochemicals in the cells that help us determine what make up you. I'm sorry. All I heard was dinosaur wears jeans. Wears jeans? (laughs) Story. I can can turn off the microphone. (laughs) At any point during the program, you just... Just let me know. No, it's fine. It's always a marker for when a particular story Story. is ended. Yeah. (laughs) That one ended. (laughs) Story number two. Story number two. So there's a star about 34 light years away from us that they they have found that it has a planet approximately the size of Earth orbiting it. And they were able to detect that it has an atmosphere with methane and water vapor on it. So at the moment, this is the closest Earth analog that they have found for an exoplanet. Now, this is the best they can do at the moment. They're hoping to get better instruments online within the next couple of years, and they'll be able to get a better detection on the planet and try and figure out more about what's going on. But at the moment, this is still really big news. They've got they found water vapor and methane in the atmosphere of a Earth-sized planet. Well, I got a little methane and water vapor going around me right now. <laughs> And how, that's and how far away is this planet again? 34 light years away. So, so it's just uh, a hop, skip, and a jump. So and if we're traveling uh, at the speed of light, it would take 34 years to get there. Oh, really? Take yeah. that long? Yeah. So it's in space terms, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Well, Bobby's about to smell my methane in about 34 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> now it's my cutting time. <laughs> it has been cut. <laughs> All right. Story number three. Frog tongues. There have been some researchers who are trying to figure out how a frog is able to use its tongue to catch its prey. And there are two parts of this. One is how fast the tongue actually moves out and hits the tongue the target, the cricket, or the fly. The second that they found, uh, the second thing that makes it really interesting is that the frog saliva is a really important part of this process in that it's a non-Newtonian fluid. Now, I'm going to have to take a second to explain non-Newtonian fluid because Darnell's eyes are glazing over (laughs) as I just said those big words. A non-Newtonian fluid is a fluid that changes viscosity depending on what's happening with it. 
So, for example, you can set up a tub of Newtonian fluid, and if you stand on it, you'll sink into the tub of the liquid. On the other hand, you can run across the stub stuff, and then you won't sink into it while you run across it, because it changes viscosity. I actually seen that on um, Mythbusters. Yes, that's it. Yes. <laughs> yep. So the flo- frog saliva is like that. It changes stickiness depending on how fast it's being moved. So what happens is the frog tongue goes out, impacts the particular prey, prey and then the frog tongue is really, really soft. So it wraps around the prey, and the saliva, because it's liquid at that point, because the tongue is momentarily stationary, it seeps into all the nooks and crannies of the prey. Then when the t- frog's tongue starts to pull back, it becomes very, very sticky. And that's when, the fr- that's when it becomes glue-like. And it becomes such strong glue that it can hold twice the frog's weight. So a frog could accidentally like stick itself to a wall with its tongue and then fly off of its perch. So the frogs, what they found is again the frog saliva changes stickiness as it's. Uh, and this is this is all happening within a split second. Yes. Is it not? Yeah. Yeah, because the frog's tongue can hit its prey in less time than it takes you to blink. How mm-hmm. long is a frog's tongue? Uh, some of them can be like two. Uh, two and a half times the body length of the frog. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that'll fill your tummy up, huh? Mm-hmm. Are you fr- wondering how to fry them up? Frogs' tongues instead of frogs' legs? Okay, so this isn't the this isn't the tongue story I heard about. Okay, what was it, the frogs? Uh, there was uh, a researcher, and I forgot where which university she's at, but she was trying to get uh, a sample to to test. And she had a scrape, 1700. Oh, yeah. Well, this is part of that story. Oh, it is part I of I didn't story. want to go okay. into that detail because in one of the articles, they went into exquisitely disgusting detail and how they had to kill a whole bunch of frogs. They actually killed all the frogs? Yeah, they had to take the tongue out of the frog. <laughs> and then they had to scrape the tongues to it's get the saliva off to get enough material so that they could start testing it. Okay, I won't, if you're upset at that, I won't tell you what we used to do with frogs. Down yeah, south. Let's, <laughs> let's not. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You got to uh, break yeah, a s- lot of eggs to make a frog sandwich, okay? <laughs> yeah, you don't have a lot of frogs. Chickens, uh, frogs, how do you get a frog sandwich out of breaking chicken I, I eggs? don't know. I'm just uh, <laughs> trying well, to. Let's I'm see, trying I mean, to I, yeah, I think that was pretty sad. If you have frogs' legs for dinner, yeah, you don't have little frogs walking around on crutches. And I'm sure these are specific type of frogs, too, that they well, were Well, for with. the test, they probably had to use one specific uh, species? frog. Species? Yeah, species of frog. Do you, so think they, do you think they grew them in, grew them? But, you know, do you think they, they uh, ha, ha, raised them I, in raised a lab? Them. I yeah, say, raised them in a lab. I couldn't say that. there's a possibility that they may have been raised in a lab. Uh, there's also a possibility that they may have captured enough frogs to do this. Oh, Bobby's making sad face about the poor frogs. A lot of yeah, dead frogs in that yeah, study, baby. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. but it, it's worth it if it's important stuff that comes out of the study. But you know, it still makes me sad. Some frogs were harmed in the making of this story. <laughs> so yes. we're gonna end this. And a chicken died Alex's for my lunch. Science corner on kind of a down note. <laughs> <laughs> but they are tasty. <laughs> And they taste like chicken. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which is true. All right. Any concluding comments? I think that was it. Okay. Yeah. I'm, uh, I right. can't not. Uh, okay. The tongue. All right. All right. <laughs> I was saying concluding yeah, that was comments like from Alex, not the peanut guy. Yeah. All right. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't say anything. You did. I, I knew you were talking to Alex. Nine minutes ago, you were waiting to pounce. So don't even deny it. You're as bad as Darnell, and you'll never admit it. Never, ever, never. If Not you innocent little me. Yeah, right. What was that about a tongue that's twice the length of the body? Uh, yeah. Or a pickup truck. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that was an inside joke that nobody yeah. will ever get. Well, if you want to know the, what that joke's about, you can call Darnell right now at 203-837-99-24. He'll tell you. 